go. What's up, PBO people? Uh, I'm back, the analyst Alakazams, with the week two pickums for the PBO. Uh, let's jump right into it and with our first matchup, which is going to be the Worcester Whoopers versus the Nevada County Counterpeas. Uh, the Worcester Whoopers got a, a close win last week on the back of their uh, Terra Magnazone, while the Nevada Caterpies uh, fell to 0-1 after getting stonewalled by a Vile Plume. So looking at this matchup, uh, looks like a pretty decent Dragapult matchup here, considering the Dark Type is also a Dragon. Uh, pretty risky to switch it in. I imagine that this Roaring Moon might actually end up being Scarf for both Darkrai and um, Dragapult as kind of a uh, countermeasure to them. I think the, uh, you know, Volcanion looks pretty threatening here. Although, if that Magnezone Terra waters, it's a pretty decent answer. But without the Terra water up, there isn't really a great switch in to the uh, Steam Engine Fire Move combo. I suppose you could bring out Araquanid, because Araquanid does have a pretty high Spadef stat. Uh, I don't love that uh, for the uh, Worcester Whoopers as the answer, unless you're like an AV set, because I also don't know what you would actually do back, other than maybe set up Sticky Webs. I don't hate Sticky Webs this match. I think it helps uh, Roaring Moon and Iron Moth a lot offensively because um, Dragapult and Darkrai would get slowed down uh, a lot and also an unburdened Hitmonlee would also get slowed down, which would be really, really nice. Once again, Rillaboom, back-to-back -back, uh, Steel Flying types. Corphonite into Skarmory, really unfortunate. It really hampers Rillaboom's effectiveness. I would argue Rillaboom's borderline bad this game, which is pretty hard to say, because usually Rillaboom's good no matter what. But with this combination of Moth and Moon, you know, both outspeeding, both being able to hit it with super effective damage, uh, Enamorous resisting the Grassy Glide, and a Skarm there to resist the Glassy Glide. It, it just looks pretty bad for Rillaboom. Um, but like I said, I do really like uh, Dragapult this match. I think Darkrai could have a pretty good matchup, whether it's like a spec set with Psy Shock. And Dark Pulse, you know, again, the Dark Pulse switch-ins, they aren't plentiful. I'm assuming it'll have Sludge Bomb for um, the Enamorous. Maybe you could just be straight-up Nasty Plot with Dark Pulse and Sludge Bomb and Psy Shock, and I think that coverage could be very threatening, and uh, he has nothing to outspeed that Pokemon without a Scarfer. So again, that's why I think maybe uh, it could be Mian Xiao that's the Scarfer, but I think it'll end up being the Moon. Uh, Scizor, with its priority, does a pretty good job of stopping sweeps from the likes of Enamorous or... Um, like an Agilia Namorous or like a uh, Dragon Dance uh, Roaring Moon. I think Scizor has a pretty decent matchup this game. Because uh, the answer is going to have to be Donphan, and I don't think Donphan has a great matchup coming in on all these special attackers. You know, the, the Fire type is also a Water type. You know, the, the main physical attacker, Rillaboom, he can't really do anything to. He could Ice Spinner it, but he would be dying to a, a Grass move. The only thing Donphan can really kind of deal with is like maybe Sandy Shocks, and even that, that's going for special attacks. Uh, I think Iron Moth is a pretty okay matchup here. You know, deals with Rillaboom, deals with Scizor pretty well, deals with Sylveon pretty well. Uh, I would recommend bringing it for sure. I think Magnezone uh, could have another really good week because the ground type is Sandy Shock, so you can kind of freely get off electric moves because I also think Rillaboom has a pretty weak matchup. So it's a, it's a really interesting position uh, to be put in. I think I am going to slightly give it to the Nevada County Counterpiece. I think with their priority and their two main damage dealers, they just have a slightly easier way of uh, winning this game because i think the win cons for the whoopers are like uh, a roaring moon but not even a setup roaring moon like a, an end game cleaning scarf roaring moon and then like some defensive magnezone that volt switches around and like discharges kind of like what he did last week but i think what he did last week is kind of difficult to pull off on a week-to-week -week basis so I, I i would probably give it to the um to, to the Nevada County Caterpies, maybe 60-40. I do think Mian Xiao's okay this match. It does get outsped by, the again, the two main threats. But uh, it could be Scarf. I've seen that many a times. And it can just U-turn around. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see a Terra Avalog this game as well for Mian Xiao, for the likes of, uh, like, just Terra Fairy, for the likes of uh, Roaring Moon. I'm sure it can come in on Dawn Fan too, you know, spin away some rocks. Um... That seems to probably have some sort of value, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that's my opinion on the matchup. Uh, Mesprit might come, but I think Magnezone is the much better Terra Captain here. I think Enamorous should come, even though uh, it's kind of having a hard time because of the Scizor, uh, potentially because of the Sandy Shocks, although I do think uh, Enamorous would win that 1v1 ultimately. 
Same with Sylveon. I think eventually an Amorous could win that 1v1 with the Draining Kiss set. Although, maybe if Sylveon sets up Calm Minds uh, alongside of it, it would uh, have a problem. But, you know, if those top four come, and then, like, maybe Avalug, and maybe, like, uh, either Sandy Shocks or uh, Sylveon, I, th I, I think that would prob prove problematic for the Whoopers. So, uh, I I I'm going to go with the Caterpies here. Ben? All right, and now we move on to uh, a very interesting game, in my opinion. Uh, the Slaughter Champs are 1-0 after beating the Pittsburgh Scissors, and the Abbotsford Agrons fell to Mary and the Luscious Low Punnies and go down to 0-1. Uh, so you got to look for the ground type, right, when you're going up against Abbotsford, and it's Excadrill, who's really strong. It's a really strong ground type. I wouldn't be shocked if this is a Scarf Excadrill this week. Maybe an Air Balloon Heatran could come and try and deal with that, because it will switch in once at least. Potentially proc a Flame Body if Sada predicts and goes for Iron Head, which could be nice at least. Maybe a max defense Quagsire needs to come to try and answer that uh, Excadrill. Um, I think this is going to be a tough matchup for Agrons because they don't have like a great... Uh, Kyrium switch in. It all comes down to predictions, really. It would have to be a Max Spideff uh, Pheasantipity, I'm imagining, is what the answer is going to end up being. But uh, I do think Sneasler has a pretty good matchup. You know, the Ghost type is only neutral to Poison, so Poison Spam is pretty decent, because Excadrill, you know, if you switch Excadrill in, you're uh, having a really hard time uh, potentially getting a close combat on you. Tentacruel could come in, I suppose. That's a pretty decent answer, but I don't know what Tentacruel necessarily is doing back to Sneasler when Sneasler can start setting up Swords Dances and the like. Um, I imagine some form of a Brick Breaker might be coming for Abbotsford uh, to deal with that Grim Snarl and its very pesky screens. Uh, I imagine Grim Snarl has to come because this team does have a kind of a weakness to uh, Ghost a little bit and Spectre looks kind of scary. Uh, or it could be just non terry to Dunsparce is the answer, if uh, you want to have a permanent uh, immunity to the ghost typing. Uh, that, that is a pretty good answer, especially if it's like a defensive roost set. And Sawdust Chimps also has a lot of spikers, or, or spike removals, I mean. Uh, so the Samurai, like even if it's Ceaseless Edges, which I think looks pretty good here, like just spamming Ceaseless Edge over and over looks pretty good. Uh, those spikes can get removed. So, like, offensively, I like Samurai, but actually getting the spikes up, you know, I think Tentacruel is going to end up coming to this game. So, that's one Rapid Spinner. Excadrill is going to come, so that's another Rapid Spinner. I don't know if they're both going to have Rapid Spin, but the removal is going to be there for the Chimps. I kind of like the matchup for the Chimps, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's hard to pick against Agrons. It's hard to imagine him falling to 0-2. Uh, maybe the Trap Inch will come to try and trap that Excadrill. Uh, that could be cool. Although it could be Mold Breaker Excadrill again, and I think, uh... I don't know if that breaks the mold for Arena Trap. I think it's only when he's attacking that it activates. I'm not 100% certain on that. Through the way, um... I have to imagine Arbeliva finally makes an appearance to get that grassy terrain up. So that, uh, uh, Sneasler could be more effective, but also just to make it so ground isn't such a massive issue. I, it's going to be a high horsepower, uh, extra drill anyways, so there's that at least. A little less power has the potential to miss. But, I, I just think it's a, it's a very, uh, not fantastic matchup, in my opinion, for the Agrons. His win cons, uh, you know, he could be Magma Storm Heatran, try and trap something to, uh, to get a kill out there, but it'd be difficult to see what he traps that can't up kill him back. Uh, I mean, Decidueye is a, a bad matchup anyways. If it goes Slow King, the Slow King's just going to chilly out, I, I imagine. Grim Snarl, the same with a parting shot. Um, I'm going to be bold and go 55-45 in favor of Sawdust Chimps. I kind of like their matchup here. I think Kiram has a pretty good matchup. I think Excadrill, you know, could be played well. I think he has the defensive answers in the form of the Dunsparce, maybe, for uh, Spectrier or Grimmsnarl to set up the screens. Yeah, Grants might have to bring, like, Brick Break Cyclozar or something in order to deal with that. Um, I do think the win con for Agrons should be the Sneasler. I think Sneasler has a way to win this game after Tentacruel gets chipped, because Tentacruel has no recovery. Uh, Espeon maybe could do something. Uh, 
it would need to be Terra Fire, I think, so it doesn't get like walled by Excadrill, and then you're opening yourself up to a Mighty Cleave from the uh, from the from the Boulder. So I, I just think the game's slightly easier for chimps. I wouldn't be shocked if Agron's won though. If Agron's found a way to outplay and win, um, I, 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 it's hard to imagine him going down 0-2. But I think the matchup itself is slightly in chimps' favor. I would go 55-45. All right, here's another interesting one. The Sunnyside Suicunes versus the Norwalk Noiverns. Norwalk with a complete team change after uh, week one. Now rocking with uh, some semi-sun, I would say. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Vioplume gets chlorophyll. Uh, I'd have to look that up. I got you. So that could be, that could be cute from uh, Sunnyside for sure, 100%. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm like 90%. Yeah, it does. It does. In the fix. Yep. So, Vileplume with uh, Chlorophyll could be cute, but I don't know if you want to do that when um, it's not guaranteed he brings Sun, because his Sun Setter is Vulpix. So, I think like there's a chance he just brings like six standard Mons. Either way, I think Vileplume's pretty good this match, uh, although it can't Strength Sap freely because of Defiant Annihilate. You have to be very, very careful of that Pokemon. But it's pretty good for like the likes of Primarina, although Primarina does get psychic coverage. Might want to be running that. Um, I think Cinderace is pretty pretty okay this match. You know, just you turning around, f throwing off Pyro Balls. Uh, Hoopa, I think, really wants to spam Knock Off this match to potentially catch Gliscor. Because Hoopa can also hit uh, Primarina, and it can also hit Annihilate. So just spamming, uh, like, if you just have the, the four moves, the psychic move to hit, like, Slitherwing, the Knock Off, and and the uh, poison move to hit Primarina. I think, like, there's really nothing he can do to switch in. He doesn't have, like, an actual switch in. He'd have to go Incineroar once he figures out your physical. But I do think physical, uh, physical Poopa is really good here, even in the presence of an Avalug. Solo Terra Avalug. No other Terra Captains for Norwalk. They're gonna have to put in a, a request for a Terra Captain, I think. It's really odd that he doesn't have one. Um, the Hazards... In this game, you know, both have really good hazard setters in the form of Ting Lu and Gliscor. Um, the removal on Norwalk side is a rapid spinner. I, I think the Avalug could come. I think uh, Sunnyside, if they wanted to, could set up hazards and then bring Dusclops and have Dusclops just hard, you know, sit on Avalug, potentially burn it, and uh, stop hazards from ever going away. And Norwalk would have a very, very hard time, a uh, very annoying time trying to get rid of them. And, you know, Sunnyside gets rid of their own hazards in the form of Blastoise. And it's kind of just a really problematic position for Norwalk to be in. Uh, I think I'm going to trust Mug here to navigate this game. I'm going to call a, a 65-35 in favor of Mug, in my opinion. Uh, a couple guys have pretty decent matchups, but like Raging Bolt has an answer in Ting Lu. Jirachi, you know, Jirachi can be any set to cover any Pokemon, but I think it can't cover the combination of Corviknight and like, you know, Blastoise or, or, and like Ting Lu simultaneously. It would have to be like Grass Knot, uh, but I don't even know if Grass Knot's like super great, and it would probably die to Ting Lu still anyways. Um, I think like, you know, Venusaur under Sun, but then you're bringing the Vulpix, which is pretty bad. But Venusaur under Sun is decent here, you know, the, the Poison move, the Weather Ball, and the Grass move. That can uh, really actually do a lot of damage. I think that should actually be a win con for Norwalk. So I would I'd recommend, if in a, maybe Manual Sun, I don't know if you want to bring Vulpix, but... Manual Sun could be good because I think uh, Venusaur Under Sun would actually be pretty threatening here. That's probably your best win con because you know the likes of Slitherwing, uh, it's decent. Like obviously if it's the Choice Band Under Sun, it's doing a lot of damage with First Impression. But uh, Sunnyside's so fat that I think they can definitely recover out of that position. So I I'm gonna lower it a little bit, but I'm gonna go 60-40 in favor of Sunnyside. All right, here's another interesting game. The Lion City Leech Life versus the Crown Point Titans. Um, so when you have like a, a really fat team like this, like Titans does, you're going to find something problematic, which is like breakers, like pure breakers are really, really dangerous. And Ursa Luna Blood Moon is really, really dangerous. It doesn't have a switch in. It doesn't even have a real way to deal damage to it, I would say, because, like, Satitan is physical. Uh, it, it, like, Zoroark probably does the most damage to it, but, like, or you could trade your own Ursaluna for it. 
but it, it's really problematic what this uh, thing can do. Maybe like a max spadef shuka slow king, but uh, it, slow king's gonna get outsped unless you're like super speed creeping, and he has zero speed himself. Which I imagine these two Ursulunas are gonna try and speed creep each other. Uh, a little bit because I think it's 50 versus 52 so it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top there um, I will say I do think the Titans has a way to win which involves you know hazard stacking maybe T's yeah I have Uh, which involves hazard stacking spikes and maybe T spikes and maybe stealth rocks because his uh, removal is fortress so you, 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 you can kind of, like, the, the issue with the Titans also is his ghost is Bramblegast, and that's not really, like, a super strong, like, bulky ghost. So he's actually, like, he has to kind of gamble going to Bramblegast on uh, Fortress, because Gyroball will do over 50%, and then he has to strength set back uh, the damage. Uh, I do think Bramblegast is going to end up coming this match because of the Swampert, too. Um, I am leaning towards the raw damage output that Lion City has. I want to say like a 55-45 a, a here in favor of Lion City. I really like Blood Moon. I think, you know, Ogre Pond is a pretty good Alomomola answer because Alomomola can't flip turn, so it actually gets kind of useless and becomes a sword stance bait. And then if this uh, Ogre Pond gets a sword stance up, it outspeeds uh, everything. I think it speed ties Zorwark and it becomes a really, really problematic situation for Sertitans if there's a sword stance up, uh, especially if it has Horn Leech to leech health back from the Alomomola. Um, like Flash Cannon, uh, Offensive Hydreigon is also, like, really dangerous. Like, like all these offensive threats that are just, like, non-setup and are pure, are just really too strong for some Titans to not get, uh, broken through. And the ones that are, uh, set up have a really good opportunity to set up. Um, so if, if that was Crown Point, I would try and find a way to, um, get in a situation where uh, I can get as much hazards up as possible. The Trick Room Diancy, it looks okay, but there is like Golden Go. I could imagine a Shuka Golden Go just for the Earth Power. Um, there is like, uh, I, I don't know if it could potentially like sweep the game and win. So you have to look at like his other win con, which is like normally Satitan, right? I think Satitan has an okay matchup here. Uh, again, Shuka Golden Go could be a bit problematic. But like if you're in sun, you have to, or in snow, you have to get in the snow. If you're not in the snow, uh, you're gonna have a really hard time. If you get in the snow and you get the belly drum off, I think you could potentially sweep, uh, barring like a focus sash guy or something along those lines. Palma has a pretty okay matchup here because the ground is Ursaluna, who's weak to uh, fighting. So Palma can kind of just spam the uh, electric move. You got to go Rotom Heat. But again, I don't know if Rotom Heat really wants to take the fighting move. So it probably have to be like a max defense Rotom Heat with Pain Split. Uh, yeah, I I'm slightly leaning towards Leech Life, if I have to be honest. I, I think like a Glow King is pretty good this match. But again, like Hydreigon and Golden Go make it really, really unfortunate. You have to have certain coverage moves on Glow King that like fill up its slots. Ursa Luna could do some big damage, but I like the Blood Moon better than the regular Ursa Luna here. So like e each one could punch holes, but I think the Blood Moon does it much easier. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's what I'm going to go with for this match. All right, moving on to another uh, interesting game that we have here. The Pittsburgh Scissors versus the Tennessee Tyranitars. Scissors coming off a 3-0 loss, I believe, to the Sawdust Chimps and uh, a pretty strong, I think, Spax Kyrum, if I had to guess, based on the damage and the way it was played. And then the Tennessee Tyranitars uh, off of a, a very dominant 5-0 victory on the back of a Terrapago sweep. Um... Tropagos does not have Mold Breaker, so the same set won't work against Earthworm. Uh, trust me on this. Earth Power, uh, what's it called? Starstorm will not work on Earthworm. But, comma, it does get Flamethrower, so it will probably carry something along those lines to hit the Earthworm. And I think Calm Mind uh, Tropagos is still a massive, massive threat in this game because I don't think Scizors really has the power to take it down if it's just like Calm Mind you know, uh, even potentially Resto Chesto with Flamethrower and Terra Starstorm. There's really not a great answer. You have to bring the Tauros and click close combat. But, you know, uh, that's pretty dangerous into Mew, into Dragonite, into Okidogi. Uh, I think the Tauros has a pretty bad matchup here all around. It kind of loses to, uh, like, 
of the eight like super real mods, it loses to like one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Like Thunderous would beat it, and Rotom would probably beat it, uh, and Okie Doki Pre Terra would probably beat it. So uh, bringing it definitely feels a little bad in my opinion. Um, I think like the the Meowscarada is pretty good here. Uh, obviously gouging. I think gouging could do something. Like I could see a gouging sweep being the way that Scizors wins this, but it has to be like, in my opinion, a defensive gouging with Dragon Dance. You know, it, it has to have like a lot of defense, so it can be kind of a, a Meowscarada answer and a Okie Doki answer, kinda, while also having Dragon Dance to kind of sweep the game. Uh, DOD. I'm worried it's gonna get encored by Tinkaton. I'm worried it's gonna be set up food for like Terrapagos. I'm worried it's going to get taunted by Thunderous. I think it's a little too passive to like do anything major. Maybe you can just fire off some Nightshades to uh, try and uh, chip the team down. I think Torn has a pretty okay matchup. You know, you just spam Hurricane. He doesn't have a great switch in. You go Rotom Wash and Tinkaton, but you can knock those guys off at least. I imagine you're shooting Heat Wave for the Tinkaton. So, like, that's not horrible, but I just think the, the, the pressure, the offensive pressure, and also even, like, the defensive uh, checks for the Tyranitars are just much better. I'm going to go 70-30 on this one in favor of the Tennessee Tyranitars. All right, another very interesting game. The Vancouver Valiants versus the Luscious Low Punnies. Okay, so I do think uh, Great Tusk is very strong this game. You know, it gets like Heavy Slam and Knock Off for Latios and Clefable. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of mods that don't really want to take the ground moves that it could potentially uh, roll out. Uh, Low Punnies doesn't have, like, great hazards, so I don't even know if it needs to run Rapid Spin, necessarily. Uh, I think, like, Reverbroom's pretty okay this match. It uh, does pretty good against Clefable. It's Terra Ground, so it can hit the uh, Treads. It can hit the Blaziken. It can obviously hit Azumarill. Uh, if it gets, like, a Shift Gear off, it's out it's outspeeding everything with a potential to one-shot some things. I think Glastrier is really, really scary for, for uh, Vancouver. He doesn't have a great switch in. You know, his water types, Lantern's good, but it can't necessarily switch in great on Glastrier uh, without threat of, you know, a high horsepower, without threat of Uncle Crash still doing, like, 40% if it's, like, a banded Glastrier. Um, I think it, it, it could be pretty dangerous uh, if Glastrier starts to get a roll. If there's a Trick Room up for Glastrier, I think Vancouver loses a few Pokemon, which would be really, really unfortunate. Uh, there's no dark type for the low punny, so Azelf has a kind of a good matchup, even if Treads is kind of, you know, a semi-answer and Latios is a semi-answer. It's still pretty dangerous to have Azelf out there, uh, potentially wreaking havoc with psychic moves. Uh, I think Serilege is, like, you know, it's obviously got the Bitter Blade for uh, Treads and it's got the uh, Poltergeist for Latios, but the Clefable could be unaware, so a setup set might not be fully uh, viable. It could potentially be Scarf or Banded. I don't hate that. Uh, situation. Uh, I think it's definitely going to end up being a unaware Cliff Fable because of, you know, the multiple setup threats that Vancouver has with Revive Room, with Battle Bond Greninja, with Bulk Up Great Tusk, with Sword Stance, uh, Sarah Ledge. I think our Drapple, you know, actually has kind of an interesting use case this game with, uh, trying to break down the likes of Treads, trying to break down the likes of Blaziken, trying to break down, you know, maybe take one hit from Azumarill and hit it back as hard as possible. Um, I am leaning towards low punnies because I think like Latios is pretty pretty strong this match, just spamming Luster Purge. He doesn't really have like a super great switch in because Greninja is like a really frail Pokemon, so you're risking a lot. I think spamming Luster Purge with Latios could be really, really dangerous. And to Valiance, like I said, Glastrier is also pretty good in this match, and I think Fable with Unaware would be very annoying for the strategy that... Vancouver is trying to implement on a week-to-week -week basis. I'm going to go 60-40 in favor of the low punnies, also taking into account, you know, level of play and all that. I, I, I feel slightly count more confident in low punnies to win this match. All right. Next up on the docket, we have the Frederick Klefkies versus the Moochin Embors. So... This is obviously, you know, a huge game. It's game of the week. It says it down there. This is, you know, why Embors is here every single season. He wants to beat the Frederick Klefkies. He comes with uh, heat sets. He has the fervor. This is what he wants. He wants this victory. It's going to be an uphill battle because I think, like, the likes of Iron Valiant are really, really good in this matchup. You know, the Moonblast spam. 
Uh, there's not a great uh, switch in, especially because I think that's an iron bundle, not an iron treads that uh, Moochin has. Um, so Moonblast is like really, really free into this team. And it could potentially have knockoff for like the likes of Delphox and obviously a fighting move for Bastiodon. So Valiant actually is, you know, crazy good in this match, in my opinion. Uh, the likes of um, Empoleon could be here to help with Delphox. Potentially having Roar to help with a Calm Mind Suicune, I think could be really, really good. Having a Shookaberry maybe to live one from Lando and hit it with an Ice Beam, I think that could be viable. He does have two fighting types, so Empoleon probably isn't a long-term solution. In fact, I think Quillfish might end up coming to this game because of that, those two fighting types. I think Quillfish might end up having, um, like, spikes, but I think Empoleon should also come because, again, it is a bundle instead of a treads. So Empoleon's a pretty good answer uh, to tread to a bundle uh, because it does resist the freeze-dry and it does resist the hydro, or it's neutral to the freeze-dry at least. So it, it's actually one of the water types that can actually come in on bundle and not uh, be fearful of a freeze dry. I think maybe like a, a fairy uh, belly bolt could also be really, really dangerous for Moochin. He doesn't have a great way of dealing with it. Uh, it gets like water coverage for Lando. It could run Terra Blast as well. It could have Volt Switch. It could have Slack Off. It could just have, or could, even instead of having water coverage, it could just have Toxic. And that could be really, really problematic if he's trying to set up with Meloetta or set up with uh, Suicune. Toxic could be really annoying. They could run sub, but, you know, if you hit the Belly Bolt, it's, uh, it's uh, electric move is starting to do a lot of damage because of the electromorphosis. Um, I do think, like, Dio Speed could also be really problematic because of, like, the, the multiple psychic uh, weaknesses and the fact that the Dark Types are kind of weak Pokemon. Although I could imagine, you know, more Pico showing up this match. Uh, with uh, like a Terra Ice maybe to hit the Garchomp, I think that that uh, spam could also be good. Another reason why I think like Terra Fairy Belly Bolt might actually be pretty good this match. Um, I'm I'm leaning 60-40 in favor of Clef Keys. You know, Landorus does look very dangerous. He's probably gonna need to bring uh, one of his Flying slash Levitator so that Ground Spam doesn't uh, just happen like he doesn't get a, a ground move off like just earthquake free every single turn but uh bringing town flame and cryogonal just because of that uh it does feel a little bad because i don't think those two have like the greatest matchups here town flame maybe a little bit more so but uh i i would prefer if like both empoleon and quillfish came personally um I think, like, Bundle, again, and Polyon's one of the better answers. And Belly Bolt, if it's Spadef, he's, he's going to have to choose between, like, the roles they want him to play, but Belly Bolt, Spadef could probably take one hit, too. Um, and I think, like, DOS and Valiant are just better offensive options into Embors than any of the offensive options that Embors has. I'm sure Embors will cook something, you know, really heat up and uh, make this a really, really interesting game, but I'm going to have to, based on paper, go 60-40 in favor of the Frederick Klefkies. I 